All right, so maybe we should uh, give it a shot now. This is uh, the wrap-up debate. Uh, and it is supposed to um, last for 30 minutes, and we are trying to address the question why humanities research needs international digital infrastructures. What we presented are some aspects of the German national infrastructure, Daria DE, and maybe it's a good idea to repeat again as an example uh, what Daria DE did for one particular project, the edition of the works of Theodor Fontane. We did this already two days ago, but maybe after this workshop it's good to do it again because now you have a better you know, impression of how everything is working together. So those are the four pillars of Daria DE. A lot of things happening there and maybe because they are vertical we should rather call them layers. Um, so let's go Let's climb up those layers again. In the bottom we see a thing called technical infrastructure which foresees the provision of virtual machines that we're needing for our databases to run and to store the data. So that's where Matthias is pointing at. Yeah, thanks to this beautiful technology here in this room. Thank you. And so that's really a basic thing that every project needs. You have to rely to be able to rely on your databases and you have to rely on this infrastructural layer you need PID PIDs at some level PID service is something that is also part of the technical infrastructure and I won't even address the other points because you know they're all coming into play when building a digital edition so the next layer would be and would address research data. So that's even a bit closer to the research that we actually wanted to do or to the addition that we wanted to do. And this involves metadata. We were talking about this a bit yesterday and also legal aspects and things like ontologies, research data management and crosswalks that we will address uh, in the next layer. That is kind of like, you know, um, it's not very clear which is which, but we are already in the research layer now, and there we have something like authority file services. I didn't. I don't think we talked a lot about it yesterday, but that's definitely something that is interesting when talking about metadata. Because if you have reliable authority files, you can really uh, play around with it and really make things visible based on based on information that you already know. For example, which person is which or which, you know, where are all the places located that are mentioned in a particular text. That was something we were trying to show yesterday with the Fontana uh, project. All the places mentioned, uh, you know, we were able to put all the places mentioned on a map just by relying on authority files and on the annotation that, were, that we were doing in this edition. Then on the same uh, uh, layer we have tools like Digivoy, I think everybody has heard of it, uh, the Voyan tools. That is an easy way to make visible data that was you know, encoded in XML TI and make use of the annotations that were happening at some, at some point. Uh, what else do we have? Do you want to say something about the orange layer, maybe? Orange layer, the research layer. Um, <laughs> okay, maybe. Uh, you know, you see something like publication. That's what we tried to do yesterday. We published something. That's also where analysis is starting to become uh, important and possible. So uh, that's really the, the ladder that we were trying to climb up also yesterday. And I hope, I really hope that now this really complex uh, picture of our infrastructure is not so uh, overwhelming anymore because you now know that all the things that can help you, you can involve in your own, into your own projects, but if something is not important for you, you know, you can just leave it aside. But that's really one of the advantages of such an infrastructure, trying to address many problems that many pr uh, projects have and also, you know, profit from the, the expertise that is, you know, is there in, uh, on all levels. And if you're talking about something like Daria Spain, Daria ES, that's hopefully going to happen. 
that is also something you know that you could have in mind when starting to build your own national infrastructure and that's also where we have to collaborate because now in the last you know decade we made a lot of experience in building this infrastructure there were also problems that we, we have you know we have to solve problems every day and it would be nice to be of help and also to to get feedback on on our infrastructure because we have to really you know collaborate more uh, on a daria eu level and the last pillar or layer is teaching i think that's really what happened in the last two or three days and that's also what uh, Göttingen offers, the Göttingen, the whole, you know, research uh, collaboration environment with the university library, with the Göttingen Center for Digital Humanities, with our data center. We're trying to offer summer schools, winter schools, spring schools, because this is really something that is useful for the digital humanities. You cannot learn how to program a new language if you've never done this in sessions of two hours every week, you know, that's really almost impossible. If you offer summer schools like we try to do uh, of one or two weeks, or many others also offer in Germany um, and around the world, then that's much more reachable, you know, to get to a level of, of practical knowledge so that you can take it from there. One week of programming Python or one week of, you know, publishing with Sade. Uh, and after this you are done and you can really start your own, your own research or your own projects. So the teaching level is really something that's very important in our field because there are computer scientists, there are philologists, and it's very hard to, you know, be on the same page, so to speak. And that's what is best achieved in workshops, I think. And I think also the conversations we had really showed that, you know, uh, communicating helps understand what each one is doing and, you know, build something together. Well, um, uh, I don't know. from my point of view, I think these uh, workshops and uh, summer schools um, shows that all those modules you can see on uh, this uh, graphic are interconnected. So you can, uh, if, if if you want, you can choose just a single one. If it may, uh, if, yeah, probably the authority file service uh, helps you during your uh, research process, or you just want to visualize something with a, a geo browser. Um, you can access all those tools uh, via the <coughs> Daria DE infrastructure uh, for free, and uh, the the code is uh, available open source and things like that. But uh, there are uh, there are many interconnections um, of all those modules. So, for example, if you uh, see the uh, the publication uh, layer here, um, I may can show you an example of the usage of uh, Digivoy within our TextGrid repository. So, uh, you can use Digivoy uh, to analyze um, digital editions you provided on uh, within the text grid repository. So uh, uh, let's go into details here and let's have a look at uh, an example. So a text grid repository. Um, there you will find, for example, uh, Don Quixote. Which is the German translation? Yes. Of Don Quixote. Which is the? Yeah. Okay. We uh, provide uh, German language uh, text, not uh, uh, genuine German language uh, sources. But um, yeah, here you see that our XML object uh, has an, a persistent identifier. So if you uh, want to quote the file. Uh, you can just use uh, the persistent identifier. It guides you to uh, the XML document. Okay, um, to go back. Um, but there's also this uh, link to explore this text with uh, Digiboy. You can also just put it in a kind of a basket and collect some texts in the whole repository and then start exploring. But uh, let's go ahead and uh, let's 
send our text to uh, the Voyant tools. So we are redirected now to Voyant and we get uh, all those word clouds and... Um, I think Sancho is understandable <laughs> and plays obviously an important part in the novel. Oh, but there is a part where Sancho occurs just a single time in uh, this interval, this um, segment. So and all those uh, visualizations and uh, uh, tools are available from, yeah, f uh, via an interface from starting from the text root repository. So let's. Yes, yes, yes. Who of you has used the Voyant tools or heard of them? Uh, because I think that's a very nice way also for teaching to show students what you can do with digitized texts. Of course, this tries to provide an out-of-the-box solution and, you know, it divides, for example, in the right upper part, divides the text into ten, um, ten parts and, of course, they have nothing to do with the original text, but it's just a way to, uh, to start looking into texts. And that's what is so, so, so great about it. And I know that uh, the Canadians who are developing this are just about to release uh, Voyant Tools 2, so it's even getting better, but, of course, a word cloud is not research. It's just the first start to to get an impression of you know what a text could probably contain. or setting up a repository. This uh, is one of the uh, goals from uh, the TechScript project and uh, now uh, there's an kind of an adoption from the Daria DE project to create a, a Daria repository. Um, and we can we can tell you about the technical details and uh, the slide is also about the connection between TextGrid and Daria uh, but I'm not the one who's familiar with uh, all uh, those technical layers and um, modules and architectures so I like to ask my colleague Ubu to uh, to tell about. This is addressed at the technicians who are about to build a Spanish repository, maybe. So listen up, please. Yes, um, the build uh, the, 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 the repository was uh, 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 planned like um, nine years ago now. And we later sat down to, to uh, make a concept for the Daria repository and found out that we, we have some parts we always need. It's like uh, for the repository, very important is uh, sure always the storage, where to store the data. It's this one. The storage should provide bitstream preservation. And if it's... Uh, 
for, for, for long term uh, uh, long term preservation it would also be good to have some replication to other places to store the, the data so the data is kept safe and then to, to operate with the data you need, need the next layer it's um, we call it in textile we call it the textile CRUD for create, read, update, delete so these are the basic uh, uh, operations you want to do with your data and uh, to have a uh, not only the data, but also to find your data later again, you need to have metadata for the data. So in the in the repository, there's always ingested a tuple of the metadata for an object and the object, and it's uh, the data. And to, together, it's the text with object. The the metadata is uh, to, to to have the metadata searchable and to find your object, you need a metadata index. This is um, in text we use Elasticsearch. There could be uh, uh, just some search solutions, and so if data is ingested into the TG CRUD, it's like possibly via the TG Publish or directly from the text lab. What we did yesterday, it goes to the CRUD. Um, the TG CRUD puts the metadata also into this index, the data into the storage, and it does um, also the third important thing is. Uh, authorization and authentication. So if you store your object into this repository, you want to make sure that only you can edit this object or like we did yesterday, some colleagues you uh, invite your pro project may do this, but not the whole world should edit it. So um, the three important things, actually, how, ah, here's the uh, uh, authorization and, and authentication, here's the create, create, read, update, delete, and here's the metadata index, which uh, if you search some object, text the search is a front end which also asks the uh, uh, RRE if the user searching for Don Quixote is allowed, which object uh, the user is allowed to see, and returns the search results also, for example, to text lab. Or if we, like this page, the text repository, if we search something. Okay. <laughs> you don't see the screen. Okay, I saw this. Okay, good. <laughs> We've seen it uh, just a short ago. Um, yes, this is actually how the text repository. One, uh, one, another one is uh, the unique identifiers. So every text object has a unique identifier. This in text are created by Noid. And in is, is it an abbreviation Noid? It's or an abbreviation Noid or bug identifiers, I guess. Mm. It's built by the California Digital Library. Mm. Yeah, I guess this is explaining the text repository, and now, now we see that this kind of mirrors into the Daria repository. So here finds it's kind of the same components, which are the, which we thought to be just necessary to build up a, a repository. And I could also explain this, but I guess oh, only if somebody wants me to, or do you have further questions? So I hope this is really addressing the question of how the repository works on a technical level. <laughs> more? Anything more or about this? No. Or? Okay. Thank you. The space is the repository. The technology and the yes. methodology of the tech repository itself. The technology? Yes. Yes. If it's based on ESPACE or Fedora or this kind of tools yes. which are used for libraries or it's uh, yes. own development or? It's kind of homegrown. It's, it's an own development. Uh -huh. and ah, it's ah. So, uh, um, when we started, we, Fedora was not yet there if we thought. And so, so, so we're still continuing to use the same modules uh, in the Daria repository. But we change metadata scheme. But we change metadata scheme. But the Daria repository is the same as the actual repository, so you are changing the repository or...? It's not the same, but some components, like, so we create with update delete. There is similar, so we... Uh, we reuse some... We use the source code. So, you are in charge of developing the Daria repository, or is it a different thing? It's, uh, it's, it's also developed in, the, uh, in our... 
So you are like sharing the same infrastructure for both for Jack Street and for Darien. And how you can access to the Jaria repository? Because I didn't know there was a Jaria repository in general terms of working. Uh, Okay, so access level uh, for, for public access or diarrhea storage uh, where you can, uh, is, is, uh, 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 will be a part of the uh, next stage of the diarrhea pro project. Yeah, we are working on that right now. And the repository tries to answer uh, to uh, scientists who wanted to store their data and want to have a reliable infrastructure because uh, we were also, I mean, we as computer scientists are also relying on GitHub and all these things and they are good, you know, they are probably one of the best things that can happen right now to start a project without even having to think about infrastructural issues. issues. But there are some points where we get to a dead end because they are not made for cultural heritage or, you know, yeah. digital humanities projects. And that's what we're trying to, to answer with, one of the things we're trying to answer with this uh, repository. So as always, if you uh, um, rely on commercial products or... Um, uh, yeah, products that are financed uh, uh, from the crowd or something like this, you uh, um, cannot be sure that they will exist in 10 years or something like that, or will close down the service. Uh, so uh, that's why we uh, want to provide a reliable repository for uh, uh, humanities. <laughs> yeah, one of the things you mentioned before in the other like when you did the area infrastructure is the also the hosting for projects and this kind of things. Are you offering this kind of service for any project? I mean, as, or is a kind of uh, integrated in your projects? Or what exactly do you mean when you say virtual servers provided for projects? Uh, in many cases, uh, those projects come from uh, partners in the Daria DE uh, project. And in other cases, uh, they... Um, yeah, we, we have a, a collaboration, so we uh, applied for a, a founding together. Uh, and there are other cases where projects just use the infrastructure we offer. So it's open source, it's free for all. And, um, yeah, but for example, if uh, a group of people arrive from any different university that is not involved into tax rate or into one, one of the Jaria big projects, and say, well, we have this project, which is in our website, can you post it for us? Is it possible like that or not? Is it through tax rate or something mm -hmm. like that? Because mm -hmm. we have some people coming like that. So can you post this thing? Or people think something mm -hmm. in Spain because now we are involving people in trying to build up Darius Spain. Mm -hmm. And people sometimes tend to think that uh, hosting is provided for everything, for free or whatever. So and <laughs> well, what I want to, to show is how exactly this thing is done through Daria because people think that Daria is like, well, Amazon hosting free for everywhere. So <laughs> that's it. the thing I want to like to understand how you are working with this virtual hosting in terms of explaining to people. Well, it's a difficult question. Yeah. Yes, it is, it is a, a difficult question that needs a more diplomatic answer as I can give it. Thank you. I mean, there are definitely a lot of uh, queries from researchers, and that's also helpful for us because that way we can know what the community wants. I mean, we're trying to address the whole community, but of course, you know, we cannot do the work for everybody, but we have to collaborate on this. And we are open to everyone who is asking us, and if we think it's... Uh, uh, I mean, we first have to try to understand what they actually want, because if you use words like database, not everybody understands the same thing as a database. And they don't have to, because they didn't study database or information science or whatever. Uh, and that's why we have to you know, get on the same page. That's always the problem in the, in the or not the problem that's the things that that's the thing that's happening in the digital humanities find a common language 
And then we try, of course, to integrate their needs into the, the infrastructure. And that's why this, I mean, everything that we are doing, uh, of course, you can be a technical expert, you can be a good philologist, but it's all about communication and social skills, you know. And if you don't have social skills yourself, then you have to have people who can, you know, make people communicate and ha make people understand. Even in the chat here, I mean, I, I can only understand how I understand it. And maybe I get it wrong. That's why you always have to ask back, is that really what you meant and all that. And that's, of course, that's a given. But it's especially important in this field because it's not always clear what, you know, if an infrastructure is really the best fit for a research question or for a digital edition or whatever you, you are trying to do. So uh, you can ask us questions, of course, uh, and you can uh, define your needs. And we have a, a, an email address and, you know, there are emails coming in every day and we discuss every one of them. But the question was also about uh, um, the financial situation and the financial background of the, pro of the several projects. So, um, in uh, the best case, um, researchers um, ask us before they start applying for funding and then we can uh, set up different levels of cooperation. So, um, uh, for example, the, I, I guess the lowest layer is uh, kind of a, um, uh, a dialogue uh, uh, in front, uh, before the project starts or before they uh, start planning the project. Um, we uh, uh, can write letters of intent, for example, uh, for, for a project to uh, support the application. Um, um, yeah, as, uh, we, we also uh, can be a partner uh, in the project so uh, that uh, we have some uh, uh, yeah. uh, human resources at our department to support a project. Some uh, parts of the services from Daria DE comes from uh, the partner, they are, uh, from the partners, there are um, computing centers, uh, a partner of a Daria DE project, so they can uh, offer the services they uh, once offered just for their institution and with uh, the help of uh, a broader project like Daria DE they can offer the services to uh, uh, a broader community. Yeah, that's what we have to keep in mind. Uh, if you build an infrastructure, or if you get money from your government or from whoever, that you're doing this for the community, not for yourself. And that's really, you know, one of the thing that, things that we always try to think about. Even if there is uh, a query that we don't understand at first and which looks like work, you know, that's what we are there for, I think. Uh, I mean, an infrastructure like that, this, uh, as beautiful as it looks, it's there to serve the community. Are there any more questions? I mean, we tried to answer the technical question about how this repository is built. Uh, yes, it's available. Um, let me just so. Uh, this, uh, ah, yeah, here. Uh, there's there's a report, and if you um, ask Google for Daria DE repository report, uh, you will probably find this. Uh, it's one of the first hits. Oh, this would be very nice. Thank you. And we also brought some promotional material. Uh, so, Diarrhea yeah. repository and report. So there's a report, and at the end of this report, it's written in German. But Many of the reports we created in the textfield project are available in English, um, especially those who are with a, uh, a relation to the development or um, 
for example, a, a report uh, that describes the import process and the import, yeah, different ways of uh, getting data into a text grid. There's a uh, there's a report on this things, and it's available in English. The document is in German. The document is in German. This uh, graphic you will find at the end of this okay. uh, PDF file, or some somewhere near the end. I'm not quite sure which page number. So if there are not uh, no more questions, uh, I would like to thank again uh, Deunet and Lind for having us here. I hope it wasn't the last workshop and the last collaboration. I think I can speak for everybody if I said that we had a lot of fun. Uh, and I also want to take up the cudgels for the richness of European languages. You know, uh, During the last three days, uh, the idea arose of making a Spanish interface for text grid. And I will definitely contribute to this. And we should be doing more of these things, you know. English is uh, nice to have as a lingua franca, but, uh, you know, we as a continent have this richness of European languages. And it was nice to hear throughout the last days people speaking in, you know, German, Spanish, also English, little French, little Catalan. Uh, and we should, uh, you know, um, build on this and also make interfaces available in different languages, and I hope we can make a good example uh, by doing it uh, with uh, TextGrid so that it can be of help, you know. And even translating an interface, uh, you know, helps you understand how it actually works, because if you have to break it down to one word, you know, you have to think about, you know, how this works in all the different languages. So that's really something that I have on my list. If you have any more questions, you know how to find us, you know how to contact us, and you know, I hope to see you all again soon, in whatever context. Yes, what you tell me exactly what we wanted, because we are now starting to integrate and to develop things in that sense, and we were very happy of having you here and very interested of your, what you have doing, because we, you have so no experience, great people, big work already done, and we want to learn and we want to use the knowledge that you already have and if we can we collaborate with our technical teams and with our people to further develop the great things that we have done we'll be happy we don't have any interest in reinventing the wheel but in contributing to develop all these things so if we can help with the Spanish translation the interfaces but also with technological stuff to train our people and to find a way of collaboration I think everybody here in this room will be happy to do that, so... Uh, uh, yeah, definitely. And uh, it's not a coincidence that one of the four pillars is teaching, you know? Yes. This has to... This is an important part of everything. Without this, you know, this makes no sense. We are all learning. We also, you know, profit from teaching, so... Uh, you know. That's great. <laughs> we'll be happy. Good to see that. Yes. So thank you very much for everything. So we expect a second workshop soon. Yes. <laughs> a more text crew. And thanks everyone in the team. The library of the University of Gottingen and thanks for coming. So yeah, and I would also thank Jimena for organizing this kind of stuff from the other part of the world, bringing, getting into Spain for Argentina, which has been great. We're bringing Spanish samples from Argentina. <laughs> <laughs> so it was been a pleasure.
pleasure. We have learned a lot, and we hope to continue this collaboration in the close future. So, thank you very much for everything. All right, thank you as well. Thank you.